Hello and welcome to another fireside chat about pipe organs. In the last instalment we covered the history of both the church and cinema organ. I also talked about our plan to build some kind of double hybrid organ, that is hybrid church and cinema organ, hybrid electronic and acoustic, best of all worlds or hideous abomination depending on your viewpoint. This time around we're talking about the history of our particular project, of Project Awesome. I shall plough through this rather briskly as there's a lot of ground to cover. And once again, as we go through the story, you'll gain more of an insider's view of how these instruments actually operate. The story begins further back than you might think, way back in the 1980s in fact, when a young Mark was offered a chance to rescue a pipe organ that was being taken out of a church in Bristol. He had no idea or plan what to do with it, but rather than let it end up in a skip, he saved as much of the thing as possible and stashed it in his parents' loft. Decades passed, and then one night Mark and I are up late discussing ways that we might blag our way into music festivals without the chore of having to pay for a ticket. Some kind of act or, or artistic display was what we needed. Mark happened to mention this dismantled organ still in his parents' loft, and as I recall, the first idea was to use just a small part of it, perhaps mounted on a barrow that we could push around. A few beers later, and it became a plan to use the whole thing. Later still, one of us suggested mounting it on a vehicle, I mentioned the Soviet lorry rotting away at the bottom of my garden. Boom! Project Awesome was born. Now, although Mark had lots of organ pipes, which was a super starting point, we didn't have much else. And an organ consists of much more than just the pipes. You need a source of wind, a way of regulating that wind, and as we saw last episode, a wind chest is needed to dispense that wind to each pipe as and when it's needed. You also need a keyboard or some other control method to provide signals to the wind chest to tell it to fire the right notes at the right time. On an organ, the keyboard is called a manual, and there's usually a few of them. And then with all the other stops and the other controls added, the whole thing together is called the organ console. Our organ will be MIDI controlled, so the keyboard console system is actually going to be the easy bit. MIDI, for those of you who don't know, is just a communication protocol. In practical terms, it means that instead of a, a bespoke console permanently hardwired to the organ, uh, almost any keyboard can be made to work. It also means that if we want, the organ can be played by a computer, either entirely or in part. And part of the fun of our finished organ is it's going to be hard to tell when it's playing itself, or when we're playing it, or both. We started with the wind supply, and the first thing that we ever made was this regulator to control the wind flow into the wind chest. Providing the wind was our foundry blower. At the time, we could only run this direct from a generator at a set speed, and it's a bit mental flat out. Like the wind chest, the regulator is also a box of wind, but this one can rise and fall to maintain a steady pressure. It then passes that regulated air to the wind chest. Without a regulator, the more notes you play at once, the quieter they get as the pressure drops within the chest. As well as the foundry blower, we started with a small second-hand bouncy castle blower. Not just used for the organ, it's now also powered my blacksmithing forge for many years. Ten quid well spent there. So with wind supply and regulation covered, we move on to the wind chest. We couldn't find one to buy at the time, but we did have lots of old salvage components, so we had to go at building our own. For the first attempt, we did this as simply as possible using electric direct action. Mark had a whole bucket full of these solenoids. We picked out the best ones and built them into the wind chest. Having built the wind chest, we needed a way of controlling it, and that's what you see here. The very earliest beginnings of what becomes the organ control system. We had this small rank of flutes working rather well, and we learned a lot from its construction. The advantages of direct action are though it's very simple and fairly robust, but they are slow to operate. Not much cop if you want to bang out some techno. <laughs> you think I'm joking. What we needed was to move on to proper electro-pneumatic action, and so we started construction of Winchester number two, the second one I showed you last episode. A far more complicated construction, once again using very old salvage components, and bigger too. Winchester one has 21 pipes, with Winchester two we have 30 pipes. Eventually our biggest two ranks will have 77 pipes each, but you have to start somewhere. So with two homemade wind chests, a cobbled together control system and a small bouncy castle blower, we had what we christened the lame organ, our first prototype instrument. Only 51 notes available, but we were able to play recognisable music on it. This felt like we had reached a big milestone. Our 
Our next goal for the project was finding these two massive wind chests with provision for 122 pipes on each chest. If we could get these working, we'd be well on our way towards a proper organ. These seem to have been high pressure cinema organ chests originally, so perfect for us. They've been converted for church use at some point, then taken out of service and then ended up left behind during a house move. Someone probably couldn't just face the sheer ball ache of moving them. The new owner of the property listed them on eBay and that's how we came to acquire them after driving all the way up north to Bradford and extracting them from the upstairs of an old outbuilding. To fill out the sound of the organ we need metal pipes as well as wood and this brought on our next road trip all the way up to Scotland to meet Larry who ran the most charming micro cinema with a massively oversized organ that he'd built to accompany the films. Larry sold us two full ranks of metal pipes and a few wind chests too, all of which was a tremendous boost for the project. Larry is sadly no longer with us, but I do hope someone was able to take on his work as it was a very unique place. That takes us up to late 2019, shortly after came Covid and that put a stop to everything. Although while stuck at home, Mark managed to rewire a totally obsolete electronic organ into a fully featured MIDI controller that might one day control our organ. What project time we did have, we spent on the truck rather than the organ. I then decided to concentrate entirely on Project Kermit, my Land Rover project, as I felt if I didn't do that, I would never finish it. It took me a while, okay, a few years, but I got it done. Mark finalised the designs for the controllers and sent off the plans to be turned into proper printed circuit boards. These controllers take incoming MIDI data and convert it into electrical pulses to be sent down one wire per pipe to trigger the action and sound the note. The eventual plan is to have one board per wind chest. We also acquired a few more bits, some more wind chests and a regulator, all in poor condition, and a big blower in very good condition. So far we've powered the organ using the foundry blower and the tiny bouncer castle blower. The foundry blower can provide high pressure but not enough airflow for even one full rank of pipes. The bouncy castle blower can only power our smallest wind chest. This monster of a thing will power everything we could ever need, and more. But its motor is huge and we don't even have a way of running it just yet. Still working on that. Might even have to power it from one of the tractors. We've now arrived in autumn 2024. And with Kermit the Land Rover all done and on the road, and with Mark able to take some time off, work begins anew on Project Awesome. First job was to hack our way into the store and remove all the pipes and the wind chests and check them over. These smaller chests we knew to be bad, but once we opened them up, we realised they'd need a full re-levering. When I say lever, I'm talking about the lever on the little bellows that makes up the pneumatic motor. You'll see the re-levering process in a bit. The smallest homemade chest had held up pretty well, but the second one had deteriorated rather badly in storage, and it too needs re-levering. Not surprising really, as it had been made of cast off parts from other organs that were likely over a century old. When we came to check the big chests, we knew that at least one of those would be in a bad way, as months before when working on the truck, we noticed it was infested with wasps. We'd killed them off and sealed up the chest, but we knew they'd have done some damage. And here's what the inside looked like when we opened it up. Quite a mess. So to get the organ project back on track and provide a goal to head for, we decided to rebuild our prototype and play a tune again, but make it just a little bit bigger and better than last time. So from Lay Morgan 1 to Lay Morgan 2, nothing awesome just yet. We got stuck into learning the skills of relevering and servicing wind chests. We started on this wind chest as it's homemade, so there's no historical value, and it won't even be part of the final organ. So it's an ideal practice piece. As is tradition, everything is held together by animal glue. An advantage of this is that it loosens with hot water. So first step was to use a steam gun to dismantle everything. Then I cleaned all the bits of wood, whilst Mark used a laser cutter to produce new lever sections. Using animal glue again, I then glued the new lever around the wood. After many days of fiddly effort, we had a working wind chest.
more importantly, we now have the skills and methods to fix the other wind chairs. Mark then spent an entire week going through all the wooden pipes and making them serviceable again. Each pipe has a little connector pipe on the bottom connecting it to the chest. Some of those were split and I was able to make up replacements using some bits of broomstick and my metal working lathe. We brought in one of the big wind chests and pressed it into action as a base chest. We built a frame and hooked up an octave of the bigger pipes to give a bit more range to the second prototype organ. There's something about a, um, a binary counter that's quite soothing. This wire is horrible. It's bloody fragile. We were right on the verge of being able to play something when disaster struck as a stray live wire caused a short on one of the control boards. It took a lot of time with both an oscilloscope and a magnifying glass to find out exactly what had gone pop. A bit of delicate soldering later and we were back in the game. This brings us up to a few days before Christmas 2025 as we frantically try and get this cobbled together mess to play a recognisable tune before we're obliged to go off and fulfil our festive family obligations. So will we get it over the line in time or will yet another year click by without Project Awesome producing any actual music? Find out next episode. Cheers for now.